حمل الدين وعم الضفا ذكرك خالد حبك شاهد علي ذكرك خالد حبك شاهد علي 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 مولاي علي علي مولاي علي علي مولاي علي نذري مرهمتي كن بمن فقير علي ما يراد شر ما يرقت وجشت خجل قمر فيه شيء تسرى في كند بزيد جوني اولا بفدايا علي جوني اولا بفدايا علي 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 مولا علي علي مولا علي علي مولا علي عنه في القرآن نزال تمت فيه النعمة من ربنا آيا والدين بفضل الكرار اكتمال فاسأل عنه الليل وسوح الوضع آيا أفهل كان مثل علي بطال والقيادي عند الجهاد علي والقيادي عند الجهاد علي 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 مولاي علي علي مولاي علي علي مولاي علي علي مولاي تشهد خيبر أنت الأجدر بها آيا لما أجبريل أدى على فتايا غير أبي السبطين علي وذال كان سواه يذكر فيها الأتايا كيف يقارن أي زعيم بما آيان نفس الهادي حيث زكى من بتا ساد الدنيا أهل الظلم فقوم يظهر منك إمام هاد متى خير العباد بعد الهادي علي يوم حسابي هذا جوابي علي يوم حسابي هذا جوابي علي 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 مولا علي علي مولا علي علي مولا Oh, my God. 
شد کامل زبل آیت آیت در چه روزی به کجا روز قدیر به خدایی خدای نبود جز تو را بعد محمد به جهان مثل و به صرف تاده شوق هوای علی به صرف تاده شوق هوای علی 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 مولا علی علی مولا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي يعلم عجيج الوحوش في الفلوات ومعاصي العباد في الفلوات واختلاف النينان في البحار الغامرات وتلاطم الماء بالرياح العاصفات ثم السلام والصلاة على سيد الكائنات وأفضل أهل الأرضين والسماوات سيدنا ونبينا وحبيب قلوبنا وطبيب نفوسنا وشفيع ذنوبنا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد المبعوث بالمعجزات الباهرات والآيات البينات وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين مصابيح الظلمات وعصم الأمة من الهلكات الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا ولا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين وحجته في العالمين روح وأرواح العالمين لتراب مقدمه فداء واللعن الدائم على أعدائهم وغاصبي حقوقهم وجاحدي مناقبهم ومنكري فضائلهم من الآن إلى أبد الآبدين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنما يريد الله ليذهب عنكم الرجس أهل البيت ويطهركم تطهيرا صدق الله العلي العظيم اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد اللهم كن لوليك الحجة بن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجهم الشريف my very respected viewers, Assalamu alaikum, may Allah bless you and keep you well. And may He give us the capacity and the ability and the sincerity to follow Ahlul Bayt alayhim as salam and to love them and to devote our lives and our efforts and our energy to their cause and to their name. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad wa ajjil farajahum wa sharif. So we have chosen the topic of Wilayatul Faqih, the guardianship of the jurist, which is the ideology, the theory, the notion that underpins the Iranian government, that is the foundation of the Iranian regime is based on this ideology. So we are going to discuss whether it's tenable on the basis of Shia Hadith, or, or the verses of the Noble Quran or reason. I have pretty clearly defined what is Wilayat al Faqih in my previous lecture. And I've also elaborated what would be the first and uh, one of the most uh, tenable uh, arguments in the favor of Wilayat al Faqih in my previous lecture. So if you have not watched that lecture, Please go ahead and watch it again. There's a lot of information there. So the one of the uh, very serious 
proofs and arguments for the validity of Wilayatul Faqih, the guardianship of the Faqih, the guardianship of the jurist, is the Maqbula of Umar ibn Hanzala. Maqbula means a hadith that is accepted as valid. And Umar ibn Hanzala is the narrator of this hadith. And there is one segment, and this is a lengthy hadith. And again, please refer to the previous speech to see what does the hadith say. There is one segment in the hadith in which the Holy Imam alayhi salatu wasalam says, فَإِنِّي قَدْ جَعَلْتُهُ عَلَيْكُمْ حَاكِمًا Verily, I have appointed him, appointed the narrator of the hadith who has those qualifications that we discussed before as the hakim. Now, hakim, according to those scholars who believe in our Bulayat al Faqih, they would, many of them, not all of them, would, would try, uh, try to interpret it as the ruler, the king, the sovereign, the governor, the person who is the head of the state. And the argument goes that Imam alayhi salatu wasalam has appointed the mujtahid, the Shia jurist, as the ruler of the Islamic lands. Not only Islamic lands, all lands. So he is the only one, he is the only person who has the legitimacy and the divine recognition to be leading and to be the heads of the state and heads of and the head of society. The society. Uh, because this speech is the continuation of the previous speech, and I don't want to repeat many important things that I've discussed in the previous lecture, for those of you who have watched my previous lecture, therefore, I one, once again urge you to please go back to my previous speech and watch and listen how the argument for the validity of Wilayatul Faqih is based upon the Maqbula of Umar ibn Hamdala, the hadith that we are in. I'd like to present to you a translation of Al-Kafi, volume number one, page number eight. And we will, uh, the important thing is to understand the statement of the Holy Imam alayhi salam. Has he indeed appointed a sovereign for you, a ruler for you, a head of a state for you? That is that indeed the meaning of Hakim? Because today, in, the, in some segments of, and in some uh, understandings, in some usage of the modern day Arabic, and quite universally in Iran and in the Persian speaking world, likewise in the Urdu speaking world, the word hakim indeed means ruler, indeed means ruler. And this has been so for many centuries. It's not a very recent change in the meaning of the word. So, in modern day Arabic, sometimes it could mean the word uh, hakim could mean ruler. And if you go and if you and in Persian for sure and in Urdu for sure, the word hakim means the ruler. If a person is the hakim of an area, he is the ruler of that area. He could be the king, he could be the governor, he could be the president, or he could be a local administrator. But it means the ruler of of a locality or a region or a country. So that is the word hakim means. But we have to go back to the Arabic that was spoken by the holy imams alayhi salam. And that is very important. The language used by the imam alayhi salam in his addresses to the common people was the language that was used at that time. The prevalent uh, words at that time. How words meant and how words were understood in that area. How did the audience receive? How did the interlocutor understand from the saying of the Imam alayhi salam? And if you go back to classic Arabic, the word hakim, and it's very embarrassing for Khomeini and those who are like Khomeini, quite embarrassingly, the word hakim does not mean, does not mean a ruler a sovereign, a head of state, a king or a governor. It doesn't mean that. The word hakim just simply means an arbiter, an arbitrator, a person who is a judge, someone who carries out the duty of a judge, an arbitrator, a judge who makes judicial rulings. Such a person is called a hakim in the Arabic language. 
And inshallah, tabarak wa ta'ala, I'll show to you uh, some translations of Al-Kafi. And we will see how, how uh, uh, they have been translated in Al-Kafi. And this word, Hakama Yahkumu Hakim Hukman. It's various variations and conjugates have come in, in the Quran repeatedly in the many, many chapters of the Noble Quran. So one way for you to verify my assertion would be that we go to the Noble Quran and we see how English speaking translators of the Noble Quran, they have opted to translate uh, the word Hakim. Let's go to this Al Kafi. Uh, Arabic text and translation published by the Islamic Seminary, Seminary ICNY. Hey, who is the translator? Translated by Muhammad Sarwar. Okay. This gentleman from New York, Muhammad Sarwar. He has translated Al Kafi. Uh, chapter 21 on the difference of hadith. So, this, if you remember, this the Maqbula of Umar ibn Hanzala is where in Al Kafi? It's the last hadith. In the chapter of difference of hadith, the chapter of ikhtilaf al hadith. So let's go to that maqbula of Umar ibn Hanzala. So this is a lengthy uh, hadith here. Here we go. So we here we here we go. We are in the maqbula of Umar ibn Hanzala. Maqbula of Umar ibn Hanzala. Hadith one ninety six, chapter twenty one. And hadith number nine in this cha chapter. It's narrated from Dawood. It has to be in the next hadith then. Okay. Something missing here. Because Muhammad ibn Yahya narrated from Muhammad ibn Hussain. Omar ibn Hanzala. It's this one. This hadith. This hadith number 10. Hadith number 10. Why he didn't put there? I don't understand. This is a different hadith. Muhammad ibn Yahya is narrated from Muhammad ibn Hussain. So it should say here hadith number 10. But it doesn't say. That's fine. Umar ibn Hanzala. I asked Imam Abu Abdullah alayhi salam about two people who dispute with a dispute between them on the issue of debts or inheritance. And they go to the king or judge for a decision. Is it permissible to seek such decisions? So it's, it means judicial judicial rulings. Is it permissible? You go to them for they, they, they could adjudicate our differences, our disputes, and issue uh, rulings. Imam salam replied, whoever would go to them for a judgment in a right or wrongful matter, it is like seeking the judgment of the devil, Tawut, devil. Not a bad translation. Anything received through such judgment would like, would be like consuming filth with heat. Something missing here. Like consuming filth, even if it it would once established right. Even if it would, if it, even if it would secure once established right, it is because of receiving through the judgment of the devil, and Allah has commanded to reject the devil. Yet, and then it, there's the verse. Yet choose to take. They choose to take. Yet they choose. Why is translation so bad? I don't understand. Why, yet they choose to take their face to Satan for judgment. Even though they are commanded to deny him, Satan wants to lead them far away from the right path. I said, what should they do? The Imam Ali Sam replied, they must look for one among you who has, one among you who has, not have, who has narrated our hadith and has studied what is lawful and lawful in our teachings and have learned our laws they must agree to settle their dispute according to his judgment because I have made him over you a ruler. A ruler. So he has also translated this as ruler. It's a ruler. So by ruler in English, you could say a judge is a ruler because he rules. But usually we do not mean by ruler that. Ruler, the word term ruler in the English language means a person who is a sovereign, who is a head of state, who is, who is the ultimate authority in a locality in a dominion. When, the, when he may judge according to our commands and then it's not accepted from him, the dissenting is this judgment has ignored the commands of Allah and it is rejection of us. Rejecting us is rejecting Allah and that is up to the level of paganism 
in considered considering things equal to Allah. Okay, quite a translation. May Allah bless you, Sheikh Salah. Okay, so you saw this translation here. Now we go to the a book by Khomeini. Uh, when Khomeini was in uh, Najaf al-Ashraf, do you remember my previous lecture? Did I explain this? I don't know. When Khomeini was in uh, Najaf al-Ashraf, after the Shah had expelled him and sent him into exile in Najaf al-Ashraf, he delivered some lectures on the topic of Islamic government. And he proposed the idea of Ulayat al-Faqih in those lectures. He revived the idea of Ulayat al-Faqih. And most of his discussions were taken from Book of Awaid al-Ayyam, by Mullah Ahmad al-Naraqi. Mullah Ahmad al-Naraqi, who was a few generations before Khomeini, a couple hundred, 150 years or so before Khomeini. So most of his discussions emanate uh, are from that book, Awa'id al-Ayyam. Uh, and of course, we cannot quote you all the discussions of Khomeini, but what is pertinent to this specific argument? The argument of Maqbula of Umar ibn Hanbal. I'm going to show to you. This is the Islam and Revolution writings and declarations of Khomeini, translated by and annotated by Professor Hamid Algar. If you remember, I don't know if he's still alive, Professor Hamid Algar. He is a British gentleman, he is a Shia, and he's quite fond of Khomeini for some reason because he has Sufi inclinations, and of course, Khomeini was one of the giants of Sufism. And of course, Berkeley is the leftist um, uh, side of society is quite dominant in Berkeley. Perhaps that's a reason, but not quite clear to me. And also 40 years ago, 50 years ago, when Professor Hamid Alga was, uh, was quite fond of Khomeini and he, and then he translated in, in, in nine, this book is published in 1981. So at the outset of the revolution, so right after the, the victory of the triumph of the revolution, it was published. So at that time, people knew very little of Shiism. And at that time, really, most people, most Shias supported Khomeini. Most, most common Shia, most intellectuals, they supported Khomeini because they saw the Shah. It was, it was like, if you compare what happened after Tsar Nicholas II, and the Bolshevik Revolution. The Russians, perhaps everybody in Russia was against the Tsar. They were happy the Tsar was gone. Uh, because Tsar was, Tsar was considered as this despot who is bloodthirsty, who doesn't recognize any rights for the Russian citizenry. So, and the Bolsheviks, they were seen as the liberators. They were the intel intellectuals, they were the intelligentsia, and they were talking about human rights equality of all sectors of the society and feeding the poor and all that stuff. They were talking about very good stuff. So the Russian citizenry and the Russian educated class, they were very, very happy with the Bolshevik revolution when Lenin came. And they were, and the Russian press at the time, they were very happy. Even, even those people who were not communists, people who were not socialists, but they wanted democracy. They wanted better rights and better living conditions for the masses of Russia. And not only Russia, but the Russian empire, which was way bigger than Russia. So at that time, everybody was happy about Bolshevism. But what happened later is Lenin and then gradually, even from the beginning, Stalin was a general secretary. And he took over the entire nation. And what he did, people wished that Tsar, somehow, Tsar, uh, uh, Tsar Nicholas II could come back from the dead and he could rule over Russia. So in, 90, in the 1970s and early 1980, nobody knew what the Khomeini is going to do. All these new ideas, Islamic government, Islamic justice, we want to uplift the downtrodden, and Islam, doesn't, Islam serves the poor, and Khomeini himself looked like a very simple man, a man of great piety, and he is living a very austere lifestyle, and he does not have all the, all the uh, riches that the Shah displayed 
at his palaces. So it was quite a unique and new experience. So it's not, it's not very unexpected that you would see people like Hamid Algar to be very, very fond of Khomeini. So he, Hamid Algar translated um, this book, Islam in Revolution. So this Islamic revolu revolution comprises of several works of Khomeini. It's just not his discussion of Wilayatul Faqih and, and Najaf al-Ashraf. It comprises that those lectures and also comprises many other things, writings of Khomeini's interviews, many, many different um, works of Khomeini are included in this, that this theme of revolution, Islamic government, uh, they have in general, they are shared throughout those works. At any rate, let's go. So this book was published in Mizan Press in Berkeley in, when, 1981, that time, okay. Here, let's, uh, before I present to you Khomeini's translation and his understanding of, of um, of Maqbula of Umar ibn Hanzala and how does he proceed from Maqbula Umar ibn Hanzala to Wilayatul Faqih, the right of the jurist to rule all the world. Uh, let's have a look at this assertion. Today, the, this is Wal Wilayah al Mutlaq, the boundless, the unlimited, the absolute, the absolute authority of the Faqih, of the jurist, the unlimited, the boundless of the jurist. So why if, and how does the jurist have unlimited authority? Here we go. Today the fuqaha of Islam are proofs to the people. By proofs he means hujjah. You know hujjah. Hujjah is a specific term. Hujjah. Sorry. Here we go. Hujjah. Hujjah. In Arabic, hujjah means usually this term, proofs. Hujjah is used for the holy imams, alayhim salam. Or hujjah to the people, just as, just the same way, just as the message, the most noble messenger upon whom be peace and blessings, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was the proof of God. The conduct of all affairs being entrusted to the Nabi, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so that whosoever obeyed him had a proof advanced against him. So too the fuqaha are the proof of the imam upon whom be peace to the people. The same way the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had the authority and he was the proof of Allah. Likewise, fuqaha. By fuqaha he means whom? Mujtahideen. And by mujtahideen he means whom? Himself. Of course. <laughs> Not all mujtahideen. No. Only him. So that was, he was, as a matter of fact, Khomeini's teacher was alive. Said Ahmad al Khunsari. This is quite, quite interesting, this story. This story is, now I've heard from very credible scholars. When Khomeini arrived back and uh, came back from, from Paris, from France to Iran, his teacher, Said Ahmad al Khunsari, was alive. Said Ahmad al Khunsari was not that well known outside the clerical circles. He lived in Tehran. He was a student of Akhund al Khurasani, very senior, more senior than, than uh, Al Khoi, more senior than Hakim, more senior than Khomeini. And he was considered to be more knowledgeable than Khomeini and Khoi and all of them. So Khomeini went to see him. And then, because he had come to see Khomeini, he went to see Khomeini because he had come back after 15 years being in exile back to Iran. So Sayyid Ahmad al-Khunsari was very respected and he lived in Tehran. He, he was a senior most Tehran uh, scholar in Tehran, not only in Tehran, in the Shia world at the time, but he was not that well known outside the scholarly circles, outside the circles of the uh, clerics. He, when he went to receive Khomeini, he mentioned to Khomeini that you are proposing this ideology of Wilayat al-Faqih. Khomeini said, yes, I am indeed. <laughs> and Sayyid Ahmed al-Khunsari said to him, this wilaya, this authority that you're talking about, is this for all mujtahideen, all jurists, or, or for the most knowledgeable ones? Or the, for the most knowledgeable. If you say, if 
all mujtahideen enjoy this authority, then why specifically you? For what reason? Why you? You are the only claimant to this authority, that you, you are the one who wants to enforce this authority and you want to be the ruler of Iran and the Islamic world and you want to be the leader of all the downtrodden in the world. If, you, if all the mujtahideen have this authority, so this should be shared between them. And if you say no, only the most knowledgeable one has, then I remind you, I'm your teacher. <laughs> if others, if other people do not know this matter, if your, your supporters and those who are the political activists who, who support you in, in various areas, they do not know this matter, you know very well. You know quite well that I'm more knowledgeable than, than you. In that case, this authority which should uh, belong to me. And Khomeini didn't have any answer. He did not know how to respond to him, to this criticism. So let's go back to Khomeini's words. So he says, today the fuqaha of Islam, the jurists of Islam, are proofs to the people. Just as the noble messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was the proof of God, the conduct of all affairs being entrusted to him, conduct of all affairs being entrusted, he was the, this foremost authority, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the leader of society. The, not only the society, mankind, all affairs should be consulted with him and his directives have to be followed in every way, in every place. Likewise, so to the fuqahar, the proofs of the Imam alayhi salatu wasalam, all the affairs of the Muslims have been entrusted to them. God will advance a proof and argument against anyone who disobeys them in anything concerning government. God will not accept any excuse. In other words, he's saying, God, Allah will not accept any excuse if any person disobeys the jurists. Now he says jurists. He, who does he mean? Who are the jurists? All jurists know himself. God will not accept any excuse from anyone if he opposes the jurists on the questions of, on the issues concerning government, the conduct of Muslim affairs, or the gathering, an expenditure of public funds. So anything that pertains to society, running the society, running the government, that has been entrusted. Uh, and anything, all affairs, not just the government, uh, they have been entrusted to the Mujtahid. I'll come back to what Khomeini says in, with regard to Maqbula of Umar ibn Hanbala, but let's discuss a topic that is quite important, and that is the boundless. You just heard, what you heard right now was the boundless uh, authority of the jurist. Now, this boundless authority of jurist is not commonly supported by our jurists, our, our the Shia, Fuqaha uh, uh, um, and Mujtahideen. Let's have a look at this book. Siratul Nijat fi Ajwibat al Istifta'at, Kalifu al Khu'i. Khu'i's answer to the various istiftas, various questions and queries that were presented to him. And this is a 10-volume book, quite a large compilation. Uh, this is the volume number one. And Kitab al wa Taqlid, the first question is with regard to Wilayat al Baqarah. What, uh, please, Hui, please explain to us, please. Uh, clarify for us what is Wilayat al Faqih and what is your position on Wilayat al Faqih. Who he goes as follows. It's quite important who he answers. Amma al Wilaya ala al Umur al Hasbiya ka hiv al Umur al Ghaib wal Yatim. Itha lam yakun man yatasadda li hiv diha ka al Wali au Nahruhi fa hiya thabita tun li al Faqih al Jamil al Shara. Wa katha al Mawkufat al Lati laysa laha min Mutawalin min Kibali al Waqif wal Murafa. فإن الفصل الخصومة فيها بيد الفقيه وامثالها ولاية عن أمور عن دي حسبية matters حسبية matters that I mentioned in my speech yesterday those matters that are the collective responsibility of the Muslim society such as a person leaves the town and he never comes back this Muslim this guy he left a suitcase full of let's say documents important documents 
before he left his his house, his property. He left, and we don't know where did he go. He said, "I'm going for an adventure to Africa," and he went left. He never called back. He left, and he he has not shown up. And one year, two years, three years, he's not. Maybe he'll he's alive. Maybe he'll come back one day. But we don't know where he is, and he doesn't have anybody to take care of his property. So it's the collective responsibility of all Muslims to protect his uh, his belongings until he comes back. In such a case, Baqi, the jurist has, is the better qualified person to undertake this responsibility to watch for his property until he comes, comes back. Or an orphan who doesn't have any, any guardian, right? Such a person should be, uh, uh, should be raised under the eyes of a jurist. Another example that he gives, uh, religious endowments that do not have any specific person responsible for running them. So the jurist should be running them. Likewise, murafa'at, arbitration and disputes. Arbitration and disputes. So two people have a dispute amongst themselves on marriage or divorce or a business or loan or or old car they're disputing whose property it is. Now, who would uh, who would be the arbiter in there? Who would be the judge in the dispute? The jurist. These things are the uh, who is it? The responsibility of the jurist. However, any responsibility, any authority additional to this? No. Any authority that's extra, that's additional to what I just mentioned. The vast majority, the vast majority of jurists say no. The jurist does not have any authority. So the things that Khomeini is claiming, that the same authority the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam enjoyed, the same authority. How to run the society, anything that's pertinent to the government, waging wars, defense, public funds, all those affairs, they all come under the leadership of the uh, jurist who he says, no, they are not proven to be under his, under his authority. So that's the major, majority view. Now, I mentioned to you Mullah Ahmad al naraq Mullah Ahmad al naraqi uh, precedes Khomeini by a few generations, by three, four generations. And he has a book, Awaidul Ayyam. <laughs> I find it comical because it's a tragedy. It's a tragedy and a travesty. What has the school of Ijtihad done to Shias? Let's see, let's see what he says. This is his book, Kitabu Awaid al Ayyam, Ta'alifu Mullah Ahmad ibn Mahdi al Naraqi, volume number two, published by Darul Hadi, in the year 2000. Page 121. Well, Hakim, Imma Sultan, in Uridam in Humalahu, a Sultana, a Sharia, in Allah, O Khalifatu, O Waritu, O Bemanzilet, O Bemanzileti, Wahujeti, Wa Amini, Kama Marra, Flahbar, Mutakadim. إن حمل على النبي والإمام فيكون هو وليهما وقيمهما في أموالهما على أن بعد ثبوت الولاية السلطان يثبت ولايته بحكم القاعدة الأولى. He says, حاكم means the, the sovereign. حاكم means حاكم, the term حاكم that we used in the مقولة of Umar ibn Hanbal. The Imam عليه السلام used in the مقولة. It means the sultan. Sultan means the sovereign. Sultan means the king or the prime minister or the president or the head of, whoever is the head of state. It means the Sultan. It means that person, that person who has the uh, religious legitimacy from Allah to be the, to be the sovereign, to be the head of the state. That could be, that could be the Khalifa of Allah. That could be the Imam of the, or the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who are the Khalifa of Allah. Or someone who is like the Imam. Someone who is like the Imam and he has been entrusted by the Imam, and by that he means the Mujtahid. Then here we go, page number 93. And page number 93 says, um, 
ولا احمد المراقي وي ار تاكينج ابوت ذا ابسولوت ولايه كل ما كان للنبي والامام الذين هم سلاطين الانام وحسون الاسلام فيه الولايه وكان لهم فللفقيه ايضا ذلك الا ما اخرجه الدليل من اجماع او نص او غيره كل ما كان every authority every authority that the nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or the imam alayhi sallam they enjoy every sort of authority every sort of privilege that the nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the imam alayhi sallam is endowed with by allah is the same as is proven for the jurist for the jurist So and the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the head of the state, Jewish is the head of the state. The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the legislative power. Who is the legislative power? The Jewish. The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the judge. Who is the judge in the Islamic world? The Jewish. And who has control over the treasury? Who has control over this, the city? Who has control over the police force? Who has control over everything? All aspects of society, all aspects of each individual's private life, everything, everything is under the control, under the authority of the jurist. Except, except if we have a specific, a specific exclusion, uh, unless it's ex specifically ex excluded, and there are very few specific exclus exclusions, that such a such a thing is not for the jurist to carry out. So and. And there are very, very few, very few. There are, there are no exclusions at all because, as a matter of fact, jurists, the jurist position is not recognized in Shiism. But this, the same, the things that have been excluded for the, for the narrators of hadith, they apply that to the state. This is the book Al Ijtihad wa Taqlid lil Khomeini. Khomeini's book on Ijtihad and Taqlid. This has not been translated into English. This is in Arabic. Uh, have a look here. Published by his own organization, Organization of Khomeini. Khomeini's that oversees the publication of Khomeini's books. In this book, page number 26. ومما يدل على أن القضاء بل مطلق الحكومة للفقيه مقبولة عمر بن حنبلة مطلق الحكومة by حكومة is means government مقبولة of عمر بن حنبلة the hadith that we are discussing now this hadith not only proves that the, the mujtahid has the authority to be a judge but the entire government the entire government is his legitimate a realm is a legitimate domain that he should be the sovereign he should be the head of the state then he goes on page number 29 ويدل قوله فإني قد جعلته عليكم حاكما the Imam عليه الصلاة والسلام said I appointed the jurist as حاكم 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 right you remember we discussed the term حاكم حاكم this حاكم in Arabic Oh, I'm not displaying this. Oh my, oh, sorry. My, my, my bad. Okay, page number 29. This term hakim here. Hakim. In, the, in classical Arabic, it means judge, an arbitrator, an arbiter. However, according to Khomeini, because Because he's Persianized, he thinks in Persian. He in Persian, ha Hakim means ruler. 
Mullah Ahmad Naraki is also Persian. Hakim in Persian means ruler, the sovereign head of state. In Arabic, in classical Arabic, it means judge. They're quite different, right? Imam alayhi salam said, I appoint the narrator of hadith as the judge, as the hakim. So Khomeini reads this, he's very happy. He says, the mujtahid has been appointed by the Imam alayhi salam as the ruler. So in his book, in his book, Al-Ishtad wa Taqlid says, فَإِنِّي قَدْ جَعَلْتُ عَلَيْكُمْ حَاكِمًا In the maqbula of Umar ibn Hanzal. The Imam alayhi salam says, indeed, I have appointed him, the narrator of the hadith over you as a hakim, hakim here, hakim. This means, this implies, ala anna lil mudafan ila mansab al qada In addition to be a judge, the jurist also, he enjoys the mansab al hukuma ayyatu hukumatin kana. He enjoys the, the seat of the head of the state, whichever uh, government you're talking about. Whatever and whichever government you're talking about doesn't matter. <laughs> it's the mujtahid who is the rightful person to rule. Because hukuma, hukuma is, is different than jurisprudence, than judgeship, than arbitration. Hukuma is different than arbitration. And that is exactly his problem because he's thinking in Persian. He, he has not studied the hadith a classic, in a classic manner, in a way so that he should understand the meaning of the word properly. That hukuma in classical Arabic does not mean government. Hukuma in classical Arabic means judgeship, to be a judge, to carry out the duties of a judge. وَالْقَضَاءَ مِنْ شُعَبِ الْحُكُومَةِ وَالْوِلَايَةِ Qadha, jurisprudence. Qadha jurisprudence, the judgeship, in other words, is one of the one of the branches of government. Wilaya. Wilaya is also government. It's one of the branches of government and uh, wilaya here over here means, means same as government. Maqbula clearly indicates that the Imam alayhi salam, Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, he has appointed, appointed the jurist as what? As hakim and wali, as the ruler and the sovereign, as the ruler and the head of the state. وَدَعْوَ الْإِنْسَرَافِ غَيْرُ مَسْمُوعًا فَلِلْفَقِيهَ الْحُكُومَ عَلَى النَّاسِ فِيمَا يَحْتَاجُونَ إِلَيْهِ الْحُكُومَ مِنْ أُمُورِ السِّيَاسِيَةِ وَالْقَضَائِيَةِ وَمَوْرِدُ الْمَوْرِدِ لَا يُجُبُ التَّخْصِيصِ الْكُبْرَى الْكُلِّيَةِ We don't have to translate the rest of the, the his assertion. What is clear is that he understood from Al-Hukuma, from Hakim Al-Hukuma, Khomeini understood its Persian meaning, not its classical Arabic meaning. And then I'll come back to the uh, Hamid Algar's translation as well. This is Kitab al the book of sales by transactions by Khomeini. Kitab al Muassisati Ismail Yan, volume number two, published in full. Yeah, Kitab al page number 476. Again, he's talking about Maqbula of Umar ibn Hanzal. Page 477, لا في شمول الحكم This hadith clearly it doesn't re doesn't doesn't um, remain any doubt after contemplating this hadith that the mujtahid enjoys the position of being a judge as well as being a ruler. As well as being the head of the state. Then he goes on page number 497. Meaning, 
يثبت بأدلة الولاية للفقيه You must know that all and every and each kind of authority that is proved for the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that is clearly uh, the authority of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and all the authorities that's proved for the uh, in a hadith if something is proved for the wali for the ruler usually it means the imam alayhi sallam all of these authorities are proven for who? Also proven for the jurist. So he has the same authority. The mujtahid has the same authority as the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the holy imam alayhi wa sallam. Naam, la yathbutu lil faqih ma shakka thubut fi ma shukka fi thubut lil imam alayhi wa sallam. Aw ulima adamu thubut hila. Yes, yes, there is one exception. Everything, every authority that the Imam alayhi salam has, the jurist has. Except there's one exception. If we have a doubt that is this the something is included in the authority of the Imam alayhi salam or not, if we have a doubt whether the Imam alayhi salam has the capacity to do this or this, in such a case, we would say, okay, because we are not sure the Imam alayhi salam has that authority or not. We say that, okay, the mushtahid doesn't have that authority either. Otherwise, he has all the authorities the Imam alayhi salam has. Or, or the other exception would be something we know definitely. There's an exclusion that this is, this is not the authority of mushtahid. So, and those exclusions are very few. So, basically, every authority that the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has, the mushtahid has. And then he goes on. Page number 479. That the, the, the saying of the Holy Imam alayhi salam that he said, Ajaltu hakima. I made the mujtahid hakim. I made the mujtahid hakim. This the Imam alayhi salam said, I made the, the narrator of hadith a judge, a hakim. But when he says it, he said that I made a mujtahid the ruler. Again, he repeats the same thing. The mujtahid has uh, has been made a ruler by the Imam alayhi salatu wasalam. Now let's go to Hamid Algar's translation, Islam and Revolution. Writing and Declarations of Khomeini. Published in Mizan Press in Berkeley in 1981. Translated by Dr. Hamid Alger. So we read this part. Let's go to the part that pertains to. Here. This part pertains to the Maqbul of Umar ibn Hanbala. And the same tradition. The Imam alayhi salam goes on to say, I appoint him as ruler over you. That is, I, app I appoint as ruler over you one who possesses such qualifications. I appoint anyone who, has, who possesses them to conduct the governmental and judicial affairs of the Muslims. So it's clear that Khomeini takes, فَإِنِّي قَدْ جَعَلْتُهُ عَلَيْكُمْ حَاكِمًا as Imam alayhi salam has appointed as a ruler, a ruler. Okay, is that true? Does, is that what it means? Okay. Uh, Let me take you to the Arabic text and show you what we are talking about. Okay, this is Al Kafi al Sharif, the Holy Kafi, volume number one, published by Dal Qutb al Islamiyya. Here, page number 67. This is the Maqbul of Umar ibn Hanbala. And the, the, the sentence that has caused all the confusion is this one. Fa'inni ajaltu alaykum hakiman. فَإِذَا حَكَمَ بِحُكْمِهِ 
فإني قد جالت عليكم حاكم this section فإني verily I have appointed him as a حاكم over you now what does حاكم mean حاكم mean I could show you so many different dictionaries Arabic dictionaries classical Arabic dictionaries from the time of the that were written for, at the time of Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam and later on throughout different centuries that all of them they they said that that uh, that uh, Hakim means Hakim means a judge Hakim means judge it's, it won't be a bad idea if I show you a couple or two or three such dictionaries and then inshallah wa ta'ala I'll take another method I'll show it to you from the Noble Quran Okay. This is Kitab al Ain written by Khalil ibn Ahmad al Farahidi. Uh, he died at the year 17. So he he lived during the time of the holy Imam as Sadiq alayhi salam. Imam as Sadiq alayhi salatu wasam passed away close to 150, before 150. So he was contemporaneous with the Imam as Sadiq alayhi salam and also al Imam al Kazim alayhi salam. And this is the foremost uh, classical Arabic dictionary. There is no other book that is uh, that is um, older in books of uh, lexicography than Kitab al Ain. Volume number one of Kitab al Ain, page number three hundred forty-three. والتحكيم قول الحرورية لا حكم إلا لله وحكمنا فلانا أمرنا أي يحكم بيننا. He refers to Tahkim, the incident of Tahkim. Tahkim was a rebellion that occurred in the army of Amir al Mu'minin alayhi salam by Khawarij during the Battle of Siffin when Muawiyah was facing Amir al Mu'minin alayhi salam and Muawiyah was being defeated. Muawiyah played a trick. He ordered his troops to raise their Qurans on, the, on, the, on their spears. So they lifted the Qurans over the spears and they started this slogan Ali, um, that Quran should be the judge between you and us because they were being defeated and Amir al-Mu'mineen was very close to final victory and Ma Muawiyah and his army would have been annihilated so he played this trick the trick that Quran should be have a dispute Quran should be the judge and now the Muslims were in the army of Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam and they were not Shia, those people who were in the army of Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam. They were simply against Muawiyah and against Bani Umayyah, against Uthman and against Muawiyah. And they were the same people who glorified Abu Bakr and Umar. So Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salatu wasalam told them not to pay attention to Muawiyah and his army and told them to proceed, to keep fighting. But they said, how could we fight? How could we fight Quran? They have a very good proposal. They are suggesting that Quran should be the judge between us. Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam explained to them that this is a trick. They don't believe in the Quran. They just want not to be defeated. They don't want to be destroyed. Carry on. Keep on fighting a couple of hours and they would be, the whole thing would be, would be settled. The dispute would be settled. They said, no. We are going to have the Quran settled. So they started the slogan, La Hukma Illa Lillah. There is no judge. La Hukma. And there is no, there is no ruling except for Allah. So this is Tahkim means. No ruling except Allah. This is the, the statement of those Khawarij. Khawarij who had rebelled against Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam. Their rebellion started at Siffin. And then it, uh, it culminated in the Battle of Nahrawan. وَحَكَمْنَا فُلَانًا أَمْرَنَا We have made such a person our judge. حَكَمْنَا فُلَانًا أَمْرَنَا We have made such a person, we had requested him to, to arbiter, to be arbitrate between us. أَيْ يَحْكُمُ بَيْنَنَا So he should, he should arbitrate between us. وَحَكَمْنَا إِلَى اللَّهِ دَعَوْنَاهُ إِلَى حُكْمِ اللَّهِ We call him to come to the judgment of Allah. الظاهر معاني كلامات الناس لأبي بكر محمد بن القاسم الأنباري Volume number one published in 1987 
يقال للقاضي الحاكم قاضي is what قاضي قاضي a judge a judge his other name is another title other another word to describe a judge is a حاكم so this could be um, in many many books you could see this matter inshallah tabarak wa ta'ala books of law books of lexicography that hakim means a judge hakim means a judge taj al aruz the zubaidi volume number 16 another very very humongous book of the arabic dictionary volume number uh, 30 uh, volume number 16 published in kuwait in year 2000 al hukum al qada al hukum means al qada al hukum qada means jurisprudence judgeship and then he all these areas that have highlighted all the different assertions that why hukum hakama hakim they mean a, a judgeship or judge let me show you something here okay this is a website english quran it's a good website whereby you could uh, compare different translations of the noble quran so i've chosen some verses in the noble quran because you're english speaking and you cannot understand obviously english dictionary arabic dictionaries i show you there are not much of evidence for you because you don't understand you don't understand arabic so i've I thought, how should I explain to you that indeed, rule hakim means a judge. So many verses in the Noble Quran, they use the conjugates of this term hakama yahkumu hukman hukumatan hakim. So we are going to go over uh, some of these verses and we are going to review various translations. How these individuals from the English-speaking world, they have translated the Noble Quran. So let's go here. This is Surah Al-Baqarah here. Let me choose a highlighter here. Or just a pen would be good. Okay, Surah Al-Baqarah. Volume, uh, let me change it. وقالت اليهود ليست نصارى على شيء وقالت النصارى ليست اليهود على شيء. This is بقرة verse number one thirteen. Okay. ليست اليهود على شيء وهم يطون الكتاب. كذلك قال الذين لا يعلمون مثل قولهم فالله يحكم بينهم. الله يحكم بينهم يوم القيامة. Let me give me make it bigger. Someone. Okay. Okay. Let's go now. I lost the first one. Here we go. Very difficult to keep track of verses this way, huh? Because it's called so much. Go here, 130. Okay, here we go. اليهود, here. Even if you click here, they tell you. This is a very good website. The word يحكمو consists of one segment. One segment. Hakama Yahkumo. What does it mean? He will judge. He will judge. So that's the meaning. But let's have a look at these translations. So, but my apologies. This when I magnified it, scrolls very 
The Christians have no valid ground whatsoever for their belief. While the Christians assert this translations by Abdul Manan Omar. Okay, I have to. I'm sorry. I have to. I, the Zoom doesn't work here. By the way, Zoom. Zoom in makes it very difficult to to navigate. Okay, there is, this is fine. But Allah will judge. You see here, Allah will judge. Allah will judge. Allah shall judge between them on the day of resurrection. Allah will judge. Now let's go change. They, they have many translators here. So let's take another. Uh, Muhammad Asad. Let's see how he translated this. Muhammad Asad says, God who will judge? But it is God who will judge between them. So he also translated Yahkumo al judge. Let's go to another translator. Muhammad Qital, very Muhammad Qital. Here. Even thus speak those who do not know, Allah will judge between them on the day of judge, resurrection. So he also translated this as judging. Let's go to another verse. Here we go. This is Surah Ali Imran, verse number 55. What does it mean? Meaning of this is the 20th letter of the Arabic letter alphabet. No. He goes to the translation of Hakama Yahkumu. Fa, not the. It's the translation of Fa, not translation of Hakama. Okay. At any rate. Fa ahkumu baynakum fi ma fi kuntum fi yakhtalifun. He called it time. This is translation of Abdul Manan Omar. He called the time when Allah said, Oh Jesus. Allah, I will cause you die a natural death and will exalt you of myself. And I will clear you of the unchaste accusation of those who disbelieve. I'm going to make your followers prevail over the disbelievers till the day of judgment. At the day of resurrection, show me, all oh people. Shall you return and I will judge, I will judge your differences. Okay, let's go to another translation. Let's see, uh, Muhammad Mohsen Khan, just... And I will judge. Muhammad Mohsen Khan also goes, I will judge between you and the matters in which you dispute. So let's go. Aziz Ahmad. Aziz Ahmad goes. Verse number 55. What happened here? Here. I will judge between you concerning those who shall disagree. So if you go to various trans, uh, sentences in the Noble Quran that contains this Hakama Yahkumo, and you view how various translators translated this word as a judge, not as a sovereign, not, not as a head of state, not as a ruler by because when you say ruler, also in English language, sometimes a person could be ruling a judicial ruling. And the, yeah, a judge in, in such a sense as a ruler. But when you're talking, we are, we, when we, but uh, Hakim, per Khomeini, according to Khomeini, means the head of state, the sovereign. And that's not what it's meaning. And that has led him to this. Inshallah, tabaraka wa ta'ala, tomorrow, or on my next lecture, I'll present to you many statements many statements from uh, the Imams alayhim salam that Hakim from Hadith I'll present to you that Hakim does not mean 
Hakim does not mean the sovereign. Hakim means a party. So in other words, When two Shia have dispute amongst themselves, they should go. They should go to a narrator of hadith who knows halal and haram, legitimate and illegitimate. And he knows the decisions of Ahlul Bayt alayhim as -salam, the rulings of Ahlul Bayt alayhim as -salam. And Imam alayhi salam says in such a case, and this, let, let me read the hadith to you because it's this important. Of Umar ibn Handala. So what should they do? They should go to a person who has narrated our hadith and he knows our halal and haram and he knows our rulings. They both, both parties should be uh, pleased with him, pleased with him, with him as an arbitrator, arbitrator, arbiter, or arbitrator person who makes judgment. فإني, because verily I have appointed him عليكم حاكمة, a judge over you. I have appointed him a judge over you. A judge over you. It's important to understand that how did the person who was in front of the Holy Imam السلام, he understood the term of the Imam السلام. No muhaddith until many centuries, until very recently, ever, ever ever entertained the idea that Imam alayhi salatu was salam as appointing rulers or governors? No. Or sovereigns of heads of states? No. It's quite clear that this is a ridiculous misinterpretation. It's been a misunderstanding of hadith. The Imam alayhi salatu was salam is appointing someone to be a judge. The Imam alayhi salam himself lived in taqiyya. The Imam alayhi salam many a time, people would want to meet him and they could not meet him because of restrictions. Because the Imam alayhi salatu was, salam, was under uh, almost house arrest for, 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 many, for, for a great amount of time. So Imam alayhi salam, was not appointing rulers or governors or heads of state. He was appointing a judge. And then he says, فَإِذَا حَكَمَ بِحُكْمِنَا When he, when he this, this person who is a judge now, when with this stipulation condition, if he issues a ruling that conforms to our ruling. So not just any ruling, not anything that he does know, only if his, if his ruling is in conformity, only if his decision is in, in, consistent with our decision, with our rulings. In such a case, somebody doesn't accept that. Such a person has insulted the ruling of Allah. And he has rejected us. And a person who rejects us, he rejects Allah. And this amounts to paganism. This amounts to uh, believing in other gods. So uh, not being a Muslim, in other words. So the Imam alayhi salatu wasalam quite clearly is appointing a judge. And he's talking about judgeships and appointing an arbitrator. Now, inshallah, tabarak wa ta'ala, we'll talk more about this hadith in the next session. Now, I want to answer your phone calls. If you want to call me, inshallah, tabarak wa ta'ala, I'll be happy to take your calls. And we will discuss, especially if you have any questions with regard to Wilayatul Faqih, with regard to the views of Khomeini and the statements of Khomeini on the topic of Wilayatul Faqih. And especially if you want to defend Wilayatul Faqih. I very much welcome a, a party and a sincere discussion with you, inshallah, and a friendly discussion with you on this topic.
So let's see if you would call me, inshallah. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa ajjil farajahum al-shid. The way to call me is to click the link or dial the number. The, the number and the links, they are present at the, at the description of the video and YouTube and Facebook. Salamullah. Hussein. So no challenges from the followers of Khomeini, supporters of Khomeini. <laughs> Any justification why for Khomeini, why uh, Hakim would mean a ruler, a sovereign, a head of state? Any defense for this great mujtahid and for the school of ijtihad? And always they tell you why to do taqlid, you do taqlid. You taqlid because you cannot understand hadith. And these people, mujtahideen, they understand hadith very well. Well, good luck. This is the grand mujtahid Khomeini in his understanding, his prophetic understanding of hadith. He cannot, something very basic, very, very rudimentary. I knew this, Hakim. Hakim means a qadi when I was a kid because I read hadith. When I was very young, I was reading Nahjul Balagha. And I realized when Nahjul, reading Nahjul Balagha, and I didn't know Arabic very well at the time either. But I really realized that hukuma in Arabic means judgeship and arbitration. At that time, I realized this. Uh, Salaamu Alaikum. Go ahead, please. Wa Alaikum Salaam wa Rahmatullah. How are you doing, Sheikh? Uh, Sayyid Ali. Good. How are you, Sayyid Ali? How have you been? Alhamdulillah. I'm good. I'm good. Allah good. bless you. Alhamdulillah. And Allah good. keep you well. How are things in London? Are you in lockdown again? Yeah, not, not bad. No. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, on lockdown, but obviously the people are not taking it as seriously as the first one. So, mm -hmm. you know, you still see people going out, but currently... What, what, do, you what do you think? Well. So, do you think that, um, like many people say that uh, that COVID was uh, was overplayed. You agree? You think it was exaggerated? It's not as dangerous as it was? Um, I, I, people I, were scared? I, I think somehow it's exaggerated. I, I mean, I personally know some people who actually got, you know, coronavirus. Um, mm -hmm. One of them, for example, he was a very fit person, athletic, mm -hmm. and he got it, you know, during the beginning, um, and he went on the underground in London, and some guy was coughing, and I think he caught it from there. But even after he's healed now, he's on an asthma inhaler, and he feels it's uh, permanently kind of damaged his lungs. Other people wow. I know who got it, they didn't really get affected. So it's, mm -hmm. it's not like a hoax or a, a fraud that uh, mm -hmm. some people are claiming. However, it's, it's definitely been used by some governments in some cases for their own advantage i definitely say mm -hmm. so uh, yeah. you know inshallah we get we get past this uh, this thing inshallah inshallah may allah keep you well inshallah Thank you. and uh, good to see this uh, series um i just yeah. wanted to ask a, a question see your opinion on something yeah. probably you'll address it um I, i'm not sure how many episodes you're planning to do but obviously i i know that you're the, of the opinion that there can be um no islamic government before the time of the imam is that correct then no it, even ijtihad based type of uh, government is that correct that's correct yeah, so I wanted to ask them, um, what's your opinion, especially for Shias in the West? Uh, what should their role be in regard to the governments now? Because as we know, any society, as you mentioned, like you know, during yeah. the coronavirus thing, we saw how people started going crazy. They started mm -hmm. like buy, overly buying things. And there needs to be some system of law and order to protect the society. Yeah. So if there cannot be any government, let's say Islamic government, um, does there not need to be some types of governments in the world? Because if there was no governments or order of law, let's say even the Islamic, non-Islamic secular governments, we have them now, uh, things would be like chaos. So what are the yeah. duties of the Shia in this so, time? Because so, as we know, unfortunately, many Bakris, uh, yeah. sorry, um, many Bakris, they get involved in some politics to uh, influence Western governments and get power. So how should mm -hmm. the Shias be in this time? What is their duty? 
in the non-Muslim countries? Should they be involved in politics, authority, police services, uh, etc.? So when we say that there cannot be any Islamic government, that is because what we, how do we define Islamic? And that's another topic, why it cannot, there cannot be an Islamic government. Now, now it's another question. If we cannot have an Islamic government, then do I suggest there shouldn't be any government? The, the, the truth of the matter is mm. that that supposition is a wrong supposition because people love governments. People want to rule. People want to rule either by, yeah. by, by hook by, or by crook or by force or by through elections. People want to rule. So this suggestion that there will be, it's possible that you have a society and because no, there will be nobody interested in ruling. That's not going to happen ever, ever. Even if it's a very, very uh, primitive society, a, a tribe that's living in an isolation in some, uh, some desert or, uh, or some, some jungle, is still, there would be some form of uh, social order. There would be a person who would be at the top law, yeah. of the pyramid. Yeah, at the top of the pyramid. May, that may not be legitimate. That may not be, that may not be fair. That may not be Islamic, but it's going to be. So this supposition that I'm asking for... Uh, no government at all. That's not true. What I'm saying that if we define Islamic government as follows, the, per, the head of the state appointed by Allah, by the, appointed by the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and the laws, all of the laws, none of the man-made, they coming from the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ahlul Bayt Alayhi Wasallam, from Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, by Allah, then only then a government could be Islamic. Otherwise, it's not Islamic. You're making, you're just simply calling it Islamic. You're making your own laws. And Islam is the message of Allah. Islam is not the things that people make up and attribute it to Islam. So that's why you cannot have an Islamic government. There, there is absolutely, totally absurd because there are no instructions how to do it. And what are going to be the laws and who is going mm -hmm. to lead that government? And that position is solely reserved for the, the holy Imam, the infallible Imam alayhi salam. And now, what should we do we in the West? So when we say there is no Islamic government, the West agrees with us. The Western governments, they never claim that they are Islamic governments. They are saying they are, they are, they are uh, secular governments. They derive their legitimacy not from religion, not from the Christianity. They derive their, their legitimacy from, from, from the consent of the majority so and and this is and if they do, if you do not agree with them they don't you don't have to agree with them on everything but you just cannot break their laws so the same way that you lived the holy imams alayhi wasalam, lived in their times they did not consider the government of bani umayyah or bani abbas as islamic governments although they claim to be islamic but obviously, the holy imams, alayhi wasalam, they did not recognize them as Islamic governments. But they made sure, mm -hmm. the holy imams, alayhi wasalam, made sure that they, or they made, and they made sure they're Shias. They do not violate the, the red lines by the government, so they would get into trouble. So as when we are living in the and West. The killing of the Shias, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are living in the West. Obviously, obviously, breaking, breaking the, the law in the West, nobody says it's a sin. It's not a sin, neither in Christianity, nor, nor neither in Ju Judaism, nor in Islam. So because these are not religious governments and they are, these are not the governments of the, of the church or, or a God or Allah or anybody. These are secular governments. If you break their laws, if they catch you, if they catch you, then you could be prosecuted. And sometimes you, they, they may let you go. Depends how, how serious your violation is. So, and that's why you're expected, you're expected to follow the law. So, because otherwise there will be consequences. You don't have to agree with the laws. You, you, could, you could disagree with the laws, but you cannot break them. If you break them, they will, they will, they will come after you. Yeah. So, so that is my position, basically. I, I, my, my position is the governments in the West, they are secular governments and they are not perfect governments. They, have, they, they do many things that are wrong, many things they could do better. And they're not Islamic governments for sure. And their laws are not sacred. These laws are man-made. And if you violate these laws, it's not that you may have committed a sin in the eyes of Allah. It's if you violate these laws, mm -hmm. you would be prosecuted, perhaps, not necessarily if they catch you. If they, you would be prosecuted and you would be, uh, you, you would, you would, 
probably serve jail time, perhaps. Therefore, you should not get into trouble with the law. And now, as far as participation and the partic participation in the government, your other your other uh, portion of your question, participation in the government. So there are clear clear boundaries for that in Shia Islam. The uh, what are the conditions of a person who wants to serve in the government? The conditions for that those are that such a person he may never ever if you want to serve in a government you may never sir uh, take a duty whereby you will abuse other people you will abuse other people so if you want if you want to get hired by the government of pakistan as an assassin to go and assassinate shia shias or or whatever do not do that or if they uh, if the government of iran hires you as a a torturer that you would go to prison and it will be your duty to, to torment and torture prisoners until they confess. So that's an abuse. Do not do that. If the U.S. government hires you and gives you a job that is in which there is an abuse of other people, do not, do, you, you're not allowed to carry out such an action. So first, you cannot have, and there are hadith to that effect. So you cannot do thulm. You cannot be part of an uh, oppression. But if your duties are not, a, 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 uh, do not involve any oppression. For instance, you you work at a hospital, a government hospital, or you're an administrator in, in the health sector, or some of these other matters. Mm, or it's environment, making environment. Uh, yeah, or uh, or yes, or you want to you work you work in the political decision part of it. As law. so we have hadith that the kafara, the kafara of uh, how you make up for working for the government is that you help your brother you help out your brother you help out your shia brother so wherever you can however you can you help out that is the kafara of working for the government so whoever a person works because, wants to work for yeah. the government as long as he's not abusing as long as the government is not giving him something in which there's an abuse clear violation of the laws of of allah and the rights of other people and then he has to serve this community that is clear instruction from the uh -huh. Holy Mosque. I, I get your example, yeah, because basically there was a campaign many years ago in the UK by extreme Salafis, and you know the verse in the Quran where it says the, the hukum is, yeah. Um, uh, oh, sorry, yeah, the hukum is just for Allah. So there was a big like dispute between the Salafis where they were saying that oh, voting is shirk, and mm -hmm. saying don't vote, and then the other side of the Omaris were saying no, we need to vote for the lesser evil. For example, now in America we see Biden. He's much more openly, even if it's lies, even if he does this just for vote, he's more friendly towards Islam openly in the sense that he'll quote a hadith, he'll say Islam should be respected like other religions. Whereas Trump before him was very vicious towards Islam openly. This verse, and even some Shia well, have seen they've adopted extreme mindset where they're like, the hukum is only for Allah, the law is only for Allah, whoever votes is a kafir, uh, Muslim, mm -hmm. you, this is man made law. So how would you answer them on this kind of thing when they bring this verse as well and they, they try to bring this part of the verse along that you shouldn't vote at all? And... Well, what is voting? Voting is you are supporting another person to reach a seat of power. And he, in a sense, is going to be your yeah. representative to do various things. And most of the time, these people lie, really. What they tell you on the campaign trail is not necessarily mm, what they are going to be doing. Doing, uh, and as your representative, he's going to be doing things that you may not, you may not, you may not agree with, and then, and then you might, might uh, not be comfortable with, with. They might be your responsibility in the eyes of Allah because you empowered him, such a person. So, so, so I would say if you want to appoint someone as your representative in a seat of power, just make sure that he's not going to do something for which you cannot answer before Allah. And such, mm -hmm. we don't know such, 100%, isn't it? yeah, find, finding such, finding such candidates would be difficult. That's one thing. And, but, but, but if there's a clear, clear danger, for instance, if there's a person who's so dangerous, if we assume that, that if there's a person so dangerous and then we are, we have to choose between two less evils in order to avert, avert a person who is very dangerous for the community, for the society, for your, for you, for, for whatever is that's beneficial to us. And such a case to vote for the other side, perhaps that could be legitimate, but by itself, uh, 
basically you're empowering another person for a seat that is not suited. No person is suited for that seat except the holy Imam Ali. So no person can go there and be the head of exactly. a state and and not and not abuse his powers and not violate other people's rights unless he's infallible. Because there are the immense responsibilities and the and the decisions, very critical decisions they have to make in darkness because they do not know what the outcome is going to be. They order things and sometimes they turn out to be horrible decisions, horrible decisions. And people die. Sometimes thousands and hundreds of thousands or millions of people die because the head of state miscalculated. His advisors did not foresee something. And then you, you put him there. You put him there. So we have to be careful. Who do we vote? Now, that, that doesn't mean, I, it, 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 it doesn't mean that, that, uh, that the Western democracy is totally evil. So there are diff various forms of government. To, uh, honestly, it's, uh, it's quite popular amongst the Shia to bash the West, to be anti-Western. That, that makes you quite, and this is because of, because of what happened in the last 50, 70 years, because, because of the, I, I believe that this is because of the strong influence of the, of the Salafis and the, and the Ikhwanis amongst Shia on the one hand, and the Marxists and Leninists on the other, because, and this is a long story, why, why the Ikhwanis, Muslim Brotherhood, they saw the West as their enemy, because they want to establish Khilafah, and it was the British Empire. That was the impediment, the hindrance for, for establishing Khilafah. So they were untied the British Empire. And then they saw America as the successor of the British Empire. So they turned anti America. And there's also the Leninist Marxist uh, component. But, but as if, you, if you want to be fair, really, most, most um, if you compare the Western governments to, there could be very, very abusive governments in the world. These governments are not perfect. Neither the United States nor the uh, uh, United Kingdom or West or uh, European governments, they're not perfect and they're not Islamic. But we would agree that we would rather live under these governments than, for instance, the government of Taliban or North Korea or government of China. Because, because at least here you have more freedom, freedom to worship, freedom to, to travel, freedom to express your opinions, freedom to have... The, uh, as much as we can, the uh, Muslim lifestyle that we can have. So, mm. having said that, that uh, what is my position on voting? Because that person is your representative, and you make you better be sure that the person who is going to represent you, he is not going to kill some innocent person, or he's not going to enter a war. And that is, the, we will be responsible on the day of judgment to, for answering for our actions. Who, what did we do? And what did our representatives do? When I say this, I do not mean that I, I, I believe like many Shia do, and it's, it's become very pop. It has been always very popular to be anti-America and anti-West in the Shia community. Yes, brother, go ahead, please. Uh, yeah, so um, what you're saying, because uh, what I'm kind of understanding, you're saying if there's a big maslaha, like very dangerous, we should vote. Otherwise, you're saying it's better as a precaution not to vote. Because a lot of centers in America, I, I know many brothers in America, I visited before a few years ago, and I saw that like a lot of brothers I spoke to, they said after Trump came, a lot of the racists, they were more an anti-Islamophobes, they were more comfortable to come out because like Trump was saying about a Muslim ban. So the media centers in America I see now, they're like, we have to vote for Biden because if Trump gets in again, you know, he might cause wars or they'll say that he's going to cause again more racism and hate against America. But it seems you're saying that like it, it could be a precaution not to vote because if this person, even if you bring him in, it could so, cause wars so and this kind of stuff. Let, let's let's we'll clarify one thing, settle one thing, that this thing about Muslims and Islam and defending Islam and defending Muslims, let's, let's be clear on that, that Islam is a common name shared by so many different people. And we should not always, always be quick to defend Islam. And if somebody is bashing Islam, we should not always show up first to defend Islam because other people, the Westerners, if they, if they are, some of them, if they're bashing Islam, they have good reasons for bashing Islam. And we should be, we as Shia should be even uh, precede them before them bashing Islam because Islam, there are so many versions of Islam, so many different kinds of Islam. 
Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, my ummah will divide into 73 sects and all of them, all of them will be kafir. All of them will be Muslim only in name. They will all be, all be fires of hell. They will be all of, they will, they will be fuel of hell. Except only one denomination. So, so, mm -hmm. so we should be the first, foremost Muslims. Whoa, why shouldn't they? If, if Westerners or some people in the West or people like Trump who are not educated in Islam, if they utter unfriendly words towards Islam, why shouldn't they? Why shouldn't they? If Muslims look at the Muslims' actions, we Shias have seen, have been at the brunt of this, this uh, Scrooge, this horrible, horrible, unexplainable uh, barbarity that's carried out against us day in and day out for decades now. People come and believe me, it was 2006 or 2007. There was a suicide bomber in a hospital. As a matter of fact, two, three months ago, there was a suicide bomber in a maternity ward in Kabul. In a maternity ward. This was a, uh, yeah, in a where babies are born. Ba now, there was a young man from Pakistan. He gets up and he wants to seek the pleasure of Allah. He wants to enter paradise. And what does he do? He decides to put on a suicide vest and goes into a maternity ward. And he blows himself up, and there are two guys with him. After he has blown himself up, he comes and finishes off. Whoever is left, he is going. They're, he, they're going to shoot them one by one, one by one. Now, if if mm -hmm. Trump, Trump, I don't think he said anything, but if a Westerner says this is total evil, I agree with him. This this is Islam. This is total. But this is one kind of Islam. The, this is. One kind of Islam. This is Islam that is that is yeah. That, that, this is the Islam, the political Islam that's propagated by Saudi Arabia. This is the political Islam, and there are many versions, other versions of Islam that are similarly evil. That that sometimes they, they their time has not come for them to come and uh, carry out such barbaric acts. So so if Trump says something like that, and Biden doesn't say, I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not saying I'm a pro-Trump or uh, or pro-Biden. I'm. I don't really. I don't really know these people well enough to be, really. If I want to support somebody, I want to know them well enough. So I'm not pro any one of them. But I understand that that as big segment of the uh, our Western brethren, American and European brothers and sisters, uh, Christian and Jewish brothers and sisters, they would have a negative view about Islam. Why shouldn't they? Why shouldn't they? If this is the action of the Muslims. And it's our duty, our our Shia, our duty to always to remind them that there is not one kind of Islam, and that that could be accomplished only if we do not uniformly defend Islam, and we we should agree mm. that there are, and, and we should emphasize that there are different kinds of Islam, and and some kinds of Islam are very very evil. Because mm, what you're saying is correct in Germany. I don't know if you saw some of the protests, because obviously I agree as a Shia, we need to distinguish ourselves from, especially yeah. Salafis in the West. In Germany, they had some protests, and many of the far right people, let's say like, and even some skinhead people, they were actually using the term Salafi. So they were shouting in their protests their anger at Salafis. And I think this is a step forward, especially for Shias, in the sense that if people in the West can distinguish that, okay, there's different types of Islam, that can be you know, beneficial for us. But the problem is sometimes there might be an issue, let's say a ban on hijab. It affects all the Muslims as a whole. So let's say a yeah. government wants to ban hijab, it would affect the Shias, the Omaris, the Salafis. But I get what you're saying in terms of we need to distinguish ourselves because in Germany it was successful in the sense people are starting, even in the UK, this term Salafi Wahhabi, it's starting to be used in the mainstream media and people are starting to say, okay, what does this mean Salafi Wahhabi? And they start learning the difference. But what I see is sometimes that there's issues that a Western government may say where it affects all Muslims. And then all Muslims, for example, need to defend their rights. For example, the right to wear hijab, the right to have a mosque and practice. But yeah, inshallah ta'ala, we'll be able to keep doing this in the future and making people aware, inshallah. Inshallah, inshallah. I think that the, if the Western government, they want to yeah, take a position, a put position against hijab or uh, if there is a government like such, it's because of the actions of those Muslims that really li leaves no room for Westerners but to do this, take actions as such. At any rate, brother. Mm -hmm.
But yeah, uh, Barakallah, inshallah. Uh, may Allah bless you. you. Keep you well. Thank you so much. Thank you. Very nice talking to you. May Allah bless you. Thank you. Yeah, Allah yeah. Yeah. May Allah protect you. May God protect you. Thank you so much. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad wa ajjil farajah wa shayf. Thank you very much, my dear brother. May Allah bless you all. Okay. I was thinking if one of the supporters of Khomeini should have <laughs> some explanation, some justification for Khomeini's wilayatul faqih. Wilayatul faqih, the guardianship of the jurors. That he has the same authority as basically as Allah himself, as the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Could we discuss that? Perhaps some other day, supporters of Khomeini are going to challenge. Yes, go ahead, please. Caller. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, ya Shaykh. Alaykum assalam wa rahmatullah. Um, I wanted to talk to you. Uh, my name is Sayyid uh, Hashim. I wanted to discuss Where are you calling from, a Hashim? certain topic with you. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from the UK. May Allah okay. bless you and keep you well. Go ahead, please. What's your question? <clears throat> May Allah bless you and keep you well, to, uh, Sheikh. Um, so I was an ex. Um, I was an Akhbari. I used to be an Akhbari. Um, mm -hmm. I'm no longer Akhbari anymore. I'm Musuli. Um, but I wanted to discuss the issue with like rejecting Aqal and the uh, Ijma, uh, or like yeah, accepting uh, rejecting Aqal and Ijma. In terms of uh, Istanbul and what your opinion would be on that, like the justification for rejecting Aqal and Ijma. Like, for example, we can Ijma. Uh, so, so, yeah, Aqal. So, uh, let me clarify something. I do not identify myself as an Akhbari, nor do I read Akhbari books, nor do I know the position of Akhbari scholars on various things, nor when I present to you discussions against Ijtihad and Taqdeed, these, they, these discussions emanate from Akhbari books. These are discussions, these are the research that I carry out on my own. And Ahlul Bayt have said this many times. Ahlul Bayt have not given us this name, Usuli and Akhbari. We are Shia of Ahlul Bayt and we should follow them in our names as well, in our appellations, what we call ourselves. We are Shia. We are devotees of Ahlul Bayt We love Ahlul Bayt when we try to follow them. And that is our identity. Being Akhbari is not a term that I would uh, identify with or, or be pleased to be used with. Nor, nor am I inclined to defend the Akhbari scholars because I don't know. Why should I take such a responsibility to defend a tr long tradition of scholars who had many disputes with the Usulis. I defend Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam in the path of Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam. And the path of Ahlul Bayt alayhim salatu salam is luminous. It has enough many proofs and enough many, many, many hujaj uh, and guidelines that makes me uh, not need Akhbari books and Akhbari scholars. With, with my humility and respect for Akhbari scholars and Usuli scholars. Now, rejecting Aql. Which person in the world would reject Aql? <laughs> Nobody rejects Aql. <laughs> Aql means reason. Aql means rationality. Aql means... <laughs> Could you ask any person? Would there be any person in the world with a shred of common sense that would say, I oppose reason, I oppose rationality. No such a person says that I'm against Aqal. <laughs> I, I don't think Akhbari scholars would say either that I'm against, we are against Aqal. So, the uh, validity of Aqal is not a matter that we dispute. However, However, Aql is not capable of discerning certain things. Discerning certain things, Aql, and Aql will tell you, reason will tell you that this is unknown to me. For instance, we do pray, and when we pray, we do wudu, and when we make wudu, we do masah of our heads, right? You don't do it, you do it. Now, if it was not for the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for the verse of Quran for Ahlul Bayt Alayhi to give us instructions of 
on how to make wudu, we would never understand. We would never, the aql would never discern. The aql would never on its own that we, before we pray, we should wash our faces and wash our hands from elbow to here and the left hand and do masa off the head and feet. We would never understand that. We would never discern. And why is it pleasing before Allah to do masa? Aql doesn't know. Only we will, Aql would know only if, we, if there's a hadith from the holy imams alayhi wasalam. Now the, we should pray the fajr two rak'ah, two rak'ah, not three rak'ah, maghrib three rak'ah, not two rak'ah. The reason, intelligence, common sense itself would concede that we do not know what is pleasing to Allah and how should we talk to him and how should we supplicate to him so that is pleasing to him how should we worship him? who is going to teach us Allah himself you should worship this way this way this way this way because the reason is not sufficient the reason is not sufficient so re it's quite clear it's quite abundantly clear that aql, aql it cannot distinguish what is pleasing before Allah yes if there is a general rule from Allah then aql reason can identify its application on the various areas. For, us, for instance, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi said that if you are forced to do something, that's, then it's not a sin. It's not a sin. Then you should not feel bad about it, right? So, or he said that when you are, when you are in a dire situation, when you are in an urgent situation, and uh, you you cannot you need something then that's permissible for you for instance you are dying of thirst you're dying of thirst the only water that you have is not your your property it belongs to someone else this water that you want to drink it's not your water it's somebody else's water now it's over aql would tell you aql would tell you this is one of those situations that rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that when you are in need, when you are in dire need, then it's permissible for you. You are dying because of hunger. And the only food that is there is a burger made in Burger King or made in McDonald's. You will die if you don't eat. There's no other food. You are stuck in a, in a cell, for instance. Somebody locked you up for one week, two weeks. There's no food. There's one bag of burgers and it's haram burger. If you don't eat, you will eat. You will die. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if you urgently need something, because it's a dire situation to save your life, you can eat. You can, uh, you can do it. So, Aql will tell you this is one of those situations. So, Aql has this limited, limited, reason has the, this limited role in finding applications of, of, of principles and rulings articulated by Ahlul Bayt alayhi wa Described by Ahlul Bayt Alim. So, however, Aql, reason, on its own, on its own cannot know. For instance, Islamic government. I'm making Islamic government, let's say. I don't have any hadith. The president should be elected by the parliament or he should be elected directly by the people. There's no hadith. How am I going to know? How am I going to know in, the, in God's name that which one, which one of the two, two options is pleasing in the eyes of Allah? I wouldn't know. I would never know. Aql would never know. Because when we say when we say this is halal, this is wajib, this is Islamic, it means in the eye of Allah, this is pleasing. It should be this way. If uh, there's no way for me to tell, my aql tells me that this is something that I cannot discern. This is something that I, I it's not for me to know. We need an, a, a voice from Allah Himself, from His representative, to inform us what does He want from us in this situation. So you understood. And now on the matter of consensus, consensus, consensus means only according to Shia, consensus, only consensus is if the if the if the, if the position of the Imam alayhi salatu wasalam is included in that, on that matter of consensus. Only that. If the entire Ummah says this is this is white, Imam alayhi salam says this is black, the entire Ummah says this is wajib, the Imam alayhi salam says this is haram. So the Imam alayhi salatu wasalam's uh, supersedes Imam Ali Salatu Wasam's opinion, it dominates.
Now, if this is a matter of this is a matter of uh, agreement. We see eye to eye between Mujtahideen and myself and the Akhbari brethren. So a consensus is reducible to, to hadith. Consensus, in a matter of fact, is means hadith. It does not, it's not an independent proof on its own right. So that is my position. May Allah bless you all. Let's see, no more challenges from brethren and from the sisters. May Allah bless you all and Allah keep you all well. Okay, we'll, we'll see you another day. The rest of the program, inshallah, for another day, another time. Allahumma salla ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad wa ajjil farajahum al-sharif. اللهم كن لوليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى أبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويل اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجهم الشريف May Allah bless you all May Allah give you all health and happiness I'll see you next time ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا خير العباد بعد لها أدي علي منو منو علي علي مولا علي علي مولا علي علي مولا يوم المحشر تسأل لو شافتك من نورك تتعجب من هيبتك خسرت كلها والربح تشيعتك يوم حسابي هذا جوابي عليك يوم حسابي هذا جوابي علي 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 مولا علي علي مولا علي علي مولا